after watching all of this the last couple of days, weeks, the physicians in the Kremlin might be, have gone to bed last night thinking, the jig is up. They need a new plan. Get out a new map. Get out a new whiteboard. Now that their role in the disinformation plot has been exposed, their guy's not only been indicted, but also has spilled the beans on his connection with all of them. But they must have been pretty happy when they woke up this morning and learned that their allies, their friends in the United States Congress, whether witting or unwitting, don't seem to care. And they are sticking with the plan. Joining me now is Congressman Jasmine Crockett, Oversight Committee member and Democrat of Texas, who made a pretty good point on Twitter today when she said, quote, seems like we should spend less time talking about Hunter's junk and more time digging into, oh, say, Russia's potential actual infiltration of the Republican Party. Exactly. So let me start here with the obvious, because you've been working with these committee members. You've been in these meetings. It seems to me, and I just outlined this, like James Comer and his group of top-notch investigators here are just continuing to plow forward with an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. I mean, I guess it's embarrassing for them to shut it down now. It's embarrassing to keep going. What is going on here, and what do you think is, is going to happen? Listen, you've got to laugh to keep from crying. Um, Jen, you know, we know what Putin just did with Alex Navalny, right? Like, we mm -hmm. know that these are real serious threats. And mm -hmm. what I have said before that has really offended so many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is that we not only are supposed to swear to fight those enemies that are domestic but also foreign, but it is weird when it seems like a lot of the domestic enemies are right here serving in the house with us. And that's what we have, because everyone should be ashamed. Everyone should be appalled that they have been peddling Russian propaganda. And if we go back a few months, if we go back to the summer, you will recall that James Comer was going on and on and on about his star witness, who turned out to be a Chinese asset. So we've got one of our enemies, when we talk about Russia. We got one of our enemies, when we talk about China, all we need is Iran to jump in this thing and it will be a full trifecta that the Republican Party has decided that they wanted to embrace. And it is absolutely shameful and it is also dangerous, not just for our elections, but for our security in this country. I had almost, but not quite, forgotten about the last asset of a foreign authoritarian government that they had pushed forward as their star witness. Thank you for the reminder to everybody. Now, you're one of your colleagues um, on the Oversight Committee, Dan Goldman, who's outspoken, just as you are, used some of the strongest language to date about this entire episode. He said, quote, House Republicans have been acting as an agent or an asset of Russian intelligence for Vladimir Putin. What do you think? I agree. I mean, they simply are Putin's puppets at this point, right? We know that Putin definitely doesn't want us to support Ukraine. And so what's happened? They have foiled every single attempt that has been made in a bipartisan way to make sure that we can do our part in a supplemental. They don't want it to happen. And it's all because Trump says he doesn't want it to happen. And the fact that Navalny was killed the week after Trump said he doesn't really care what Putin does to our NATO allies if they don't pay up. That is a problem. And the fact that people are still considering putting this man back into the White House is absolutely scary. I need people to take this seriously. You are not voting for your best friend or who you think has the coolest new gold shoes. You are voting for someone to actually run our country, keep us safe, as well as protect and look out for democracy abroad. I mean, the gold shoes as being cool is quite generous. But yes, your point is very well taken about what is at stake here. I did want to ask you, I mean, this, this star witness, um, who may be a Russian asset, and uh, I mean, he, he, he's been pushing this disinformation for years, and it's been echoed for years. Do you have any, there's a lot to dig yeah. in here, a lot we still don't know, but are there any red flags for you here about how long it took DOJ to indict him? I mean, how many years? I mean, you know, I always take issue with it, right? I think, you know, it took too long to finally start trying to indict Donald Trump in the first place, right? Like, I mean, he had the first part of the season and now it's the find out part of the season, right? I mean, we know that it has taken a long time for the chickens to come home to roost in general. But what I will say is that uh, when it comes down to it, if people don't start to say DOJ... 
do your job, do it fast, do it efficiently, then we are going to be in a world of hurt. We know specifically on this particular issue that um, uh, it was Giuliani. Giuliani actually went over to Ukraine. He started trying to chase down whether or not this was true or not. And Giuliani came back and said he could not find anything to support these allegations. And so what did they do? They said they didn't want to hear from Giuliani. We tried in oversight. We said, hey, why don't y'all bring Giuliani in? Because he already investigated this and determined that it was false. So why it took the DOJ so much more time after there had already been this kind of preliminary investigation is still very confusing to me. And I get that they want to make sure that they don't misstep on really big issues like this. But honestly, if they would have waited any longer, we could have been looking at an impeached president for no reason. No other reason that that is what Vladimir Putin wants.